Now, moving on to the Tweets of the Week section. Every week we ask you to send in your questions for our special guest, Zavon. We've got uh, some stuff for you here. Uh, how did it feel to score that winner against Villa in the last minute um, from Charlie Redford? Uh, yeah, that was, that was a day I'll never forget. Um, I, I don't think it's a feeling that you, you could express. It's, I don't even know how to celebrate. <laughs> I, I think I just ran. Yeah. You know, um, it's, it was an amazing moment for me and my family, so I was just pleased that I could actually help because at that time I think we was under a little bit of pressure with, with like the fans and the media and everyone was saying that we were struggling. I think it was near, down, down near the bottom at, at, at that time mm -hmm. and I think that goal help, helped us um, yeah. a lot so I'm just I'm happy I, I could have helped the team. Matt, do you have full memories of that goal as well? Yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah, it was one of my, uh, well I think it was, it's got to be up there, one of the best bowling moments really for me in, in recent times. Yeah. Um, you know, like Zavon says, we was in a period where we wasn't playing particularly well, and it was a, a massive result for West Ham and helped us go on to to stay up. So, now it was a great goal, and I remember celebrating wildly. So. <laughs> uh, Thank you, Zavon. <laughs> <laughs> and then moving on uh, to the next one, what was it like playing the West Ham in Mill game in 2009 and to score against them? Okay, that one there. Uh, that was that was special yeah. uh, because. Before the game, obviously we knew West Ham Mill will have that rivalry. Mm -hmm. But obviously, as players, you don't really know how intense it is until you actually you're there. You know what I mean? So, and obviously when we was in the dressing room, we heard certain things happened outside the game. This was before the game. Sure. Um, so we 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 was willing and we was pumped up to obviously to win the game for mm -hmm. the fans most of all. Yeah. But obviously, we wanted to go through as well. Yeah. Um, and. And I started on the bench that game, so I was a little bit disappointed. So when I came on, I had even more um, drive drive to, to at least get something out of the game for myself and for the team, because obviously I wanted to stay in the team from then, then on. Of course, yeah. Uh, and then moving on um, to the next one from ex-West Ham employee. Were injuries the main reason that you didn't reach your potential you showed against Liverpool, or were there other factors? Um, I, injuries are definitely the main reason. Yeah. Um, because when I had my first first injuries, first injury, um, it was a big one. So I was out for like ten months. So mentally, physically, it was it, it took a lot out of me. Um, so it was a bit hard. But then when I came back, at first it was a bit hard to get back to where I was. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I think that made me and a few other my friends and family agents as well make make the wrong decision in certain areas. Um, but I think definitely the injury was was the only fact, factor. My, really, my yeah. factor. Yeah. Well, it's interesting just to get some more of your story of your time at West Ham. I mean, you left in uh, 2011, I think it was. I mean, do you have any regrets about how that ended up uh, sort of panning out? Um, you see it, yeah, a, p a picture of you, a bit younger back in the day there. Yeah, younger. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't regret things. Um, not really. I don't regret. Obviously, like West Ham's close to me. Mm. They'll always be close to me. Obviously, that's where I was born as a footballer. Really, mm -hmm. obviously, the academy helped me so much at home and on the pitch. So, um, obviously, I, the way I left, it were it weren't nice. I just felt like I weren't going to play at that time. Sure. Because we we obviously we sat the owner sacked the manager. We had a new manager with Sam, and then. I weren't really too sure if I was his type of player sure, at that yeah. time. Mm. Um, and then obviously Burnley came in and then the manager was saying that I would play and stuff like that. So then I, I was, it was up in the air for me. So mm -hmm. I thought I might, I might need a new challenge to get back to where I was in form-wise, like when I was playing against Liverpool and things like that. So um, so that was the main reason. But I, overall, I, my I didn't really want to leave if it, if I yeah, of course. if I would be honest about it, but sometimes you, that's how life goes. Mm. Well, I remember at the time I think it was uh, Stanislas Junior Stanislas. So he left as well, didn't he? And there was a lot of frustration amongst the fans because he seemed to be two of our brightest prospects. Can you remember being frustrated at that time, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. I think whenever you bring a young player through the the ranks, you always want him to play as much first team football as possible. Mm -hmm. So when you had two players that were, I would say, established Premier League players by then. You know, it was it was a shame to see him go, and um, you know, since then I've, I've followed their progress, and mm. you know, you just want them to do as well as they can, really. And fortunately, now Dagenham Rebbage are close to my heart as well. I live I live locally, and uh, Zavon's there now, so it's yeah. nice. 
How are you doing at Dagenham? How's it going there? You're sort of on the road to getting yourself back up, do you think? Um, yeah, I was I was doing well. Um, last season I played well. I had a few, quite a few goals. Yeah. It was the best goal scoring form of my career so far. Yeah. Um, and I was, I was doing well. Dagenham, obviously everyone knows it's a small club, but I think there's a lot of West Ham fans there as well. <laughs> so um, that kind of helped me with, to settle in. Um, the manager is very good. A very good manager, very good coach, coaches as well. Um, I don't think they'll be there very long, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's going well. It's, it's all right at the minute. Um, season's almost finished. We're, we're in mid, mid-table, I think. So we're safe. And next season, we're going to try push on. Brilliant. Well, just touching on academy players, Matt, is there anyone in the West Ham setup at the moment you think has a chance of breaking through? I mean, we had Tommy Wathen, who's the academy reporter, on yeah. the other day, and he says it's the next generation, not necessarily the reserve team, but below that, where there's some people like Rhys Burke, uh, Oscar Borg coming yes. through that hopefully can make the step up. Yeah, that's right. I, I, the players you mentioned there are, are two that are really highly regarded mm. um, from what I've told. There are others as well. But um, I, I'd like to see Rhys Burke progress mm-hmm. because um, Reese is my cousin John's stepbrother so okay, I've yeah. got a bit of a soft spot for him to get into the first team and he did well in the pre-season game against Sampdoria scored yep. the winner um, and he's, he's there he was on the bench on Sunday um, and again he's another West Ham boy he really loves the club and yeah. he'd be desperate to play at the Olympic Stadium and all that there's a lot there um, there's a lot of talented players there but it's you know it's a difficult one, really, with, with how far they can go. And at the moment, I'd like to see some young players be pushed through towards the end of the season. But the situation Sam finds himself in is mm. he's damned if he, if he does and damned if he doesn't. Yeah. Because, you know, he could put four or five in and they could get absolutely turned over like they did at Nottingham Forest. Mm. Or they could win. What a day that was. You know, so it, it's, it's a difficult one. Mm. So the, the younger players have really got a knock on the door now. This yeah. is their time. Yeah. And I think there are one or two that are close. Mm. I mean, just finally on this subject, Zavon, um, when you're at that level trying to push through to the first team, what do you think was the difference between someone like you and the others who didn't make it? Is it, is it hard work? Is it natural talent? Um, I, think, I think it's both. Um, me as a player, I, I like to work hard. And I think coaches and managers, they lo- love hard work because they know once you get to the first team level, it's, the intensity is real. So mm. uh, it's so fast that if if you if you're not concentrating for one second, then that's it basically. Um, so I think natural quality that comes after hard work. I think, mm. um, but it is it is hard. It is hard being a youngster trying to break into the first team because you got to think. Yeah, not only is is it's a football game and football training, but it's also a business. Yeah, and obviously the owners. They they want to win. That's how they, the business continues to run. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's hard to just put a young player in with no experience and things like that. So then, if hopefully Sam Sam is there next season, it would be hard for him as well because I f- still think in the summer the owners will buy top class players and then it would be yeah. even more yeah. hard for the young players. Yes, push back down again. Yeah. So it's, it's you, difficult. You have to be something. You know, re- you have to be really outstanding and set yourself apart from yeah. the others to get pushed into the first team. I think Jack Grealish has done that at Aston Villa and um, West Ham kind of need a player like that really. Mm-hmm. Well, let's hope we do have some academy players to cheer on very soon. Mm.